Hey everyone, welcome to the Photographer's Lair. Today we're going to talk about laptops. What do you want? What should you get if you want to get a new laptop for editing Photoshop, Lightroom, maybe some video editing. We're going to go through some recommendations, some of the terminology and alphabet soup and numbers that go into all the different models of laptops out there. And a lot of this actually will transfer over to the information that you might want if you're looking at desktop systems. It's all similar stuff and the recommendations are in line, but let's get into that. Okay. Hey everyone. So a number of times a year, I get questions about what computer should I get? I'm looking for a laptop. What do I get? I want to build a PC. What do I get? Um, and this is really going to focus mainly on laptops at the moment, but a lot of the technology and terminology and uh, recommendations cross over between the two just with a desktop system you typically have more flexibility as far as how much memory and how many hard drives and just a lot of different customization options that you don't really get with laptops and obviously laptops are a little more limited in space and and what you can do with that space so I'm gonna go over three or four different models of laptops um, and kind of explain a little bit about the technology and what all the numbers and letters and alphabet stoop of information that they put in the titles of these computers means and why you might want to choose something over something else. Um, so really to get into that, Adobe for Photoshop uh, recommends a minimum absolute minimum of eight gigabytes of RAM. Now they recommend 16. And honestly, I would hesitate to get anything with less than 16 gigabytes of RAM just because, especially if you're getting into compositing or anything where you're building up more than a few layers of editing within your Photoshop files, uh, you'll notice a pretty substantial difference. Now, um, I'll be perfectly honest with you. The vast majority of my editing I do on a desktop system that I built in 2016. It has 32 gigabytes of RAM. Um, but it's a great mixture of components. It's got a i7 processor. Um, and I paid a lot of attention back then when I was putting it together to what worked well for Photoshop. And it still works very smoothly. I will say the latest, this is 2021, mid-June, um, when I'm recording this, the, the latest couple revisions to Photoshop have started to cause some issues because I've got an older graphics card in there. It's a GTX 970, I believe. Um, and we'll get into that, but that graphics card is really on its way out as far as compatibility with a lot of things in Photoshop. So I have noticed a few glitches here and there. Um, outside of that, it works great. As for a laptop, for myself, I still use this, which is a Surface Pro 3. Now, this was, I bought this in 2012, 2014, somewhere in that time range. I honestly don't remember. So I've had it for quite some time. It has an i5 processor and eight gigabytes of RAM. I still run Photoshop on that when I'm traveling. It's in 2019 version of Photoshop, so not the latest, uh, but it does the job. It's not fast, but I can do composites. And for what I do, I'm not struggling with that just yet. I probably will uh, replace that here in the next year or two. That said, let's get into it. Um, so right now I'm looking at an Asus Tough F15, 15.6 inch, whatever gaming laptop. The main thing I want to point out here, um, this 144 Hertz is the screen refresh rate. 
and honestly the 144 hertz is where i would say you want to be at that or better um faster like higher than 144 hertz like if you think about just electrical light bulbs if you see that flickering that's typically the the house current runs at 60 hertz and you'll see that flickering so if you don't see something like this and it's a 60 hertz refresh rate older computer systems you'll see that and you get the flickering kind of thing and that gets to be really hard on your eyes when you're doing a lot of editing so this is this is good uh one 144 hertz the intel core i7 10870 so this 10 means it's a 10th generation chip my desktop is an eighth generation so this is two series of chips newer um that's going to be a good processor for some time yet um it's the i7 they do make an i9 but you're stepping up in money to get that and performance wise with photoshop you know i haven't done any professional comparisons or anything but if you stick with an i7 either a ninth generation so it'll start with like a 9670k or something like that i could have the numbers wrong i'm not a computer G whiz nerd i know enough to be dangerous i7-97 something or 10870 like this one is going to be an excellent chip nvidia geforce gtx 1660 now this is where the graphics cards are going to get complicated and um a lot of that is due to like bitcoin mining right now the prices on these cards is going up um shortage of chips for these things because of all the covid stuff prices are going up if you look at buying a desktop system graphics card you can spend easily a thousand dollars on a current generation graphics card just for that card so bundling it into a laptop is is kind of a great deal but what you want to look for is this gtx versus this one over here da, 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 yes no this one has an rtx rtx is the newer technology it's the latest generation of the graphics cards so there will be more compatible longer term than some of these older ones like i said the one in my desktop is a gtx but it's it's not 1660 it's not 1060 it's a 970. all that means is it's old <laughs> and like i said i'm starting to have some issues with it the the gtx 1660 ti this card i pretty confident you'll be able to get some good use out of that the nice thing about it is if you read further down in here it's six gigabytes of video ram and if you look into editing video um first off that's going to be really good for photoshop lightroom all that kind of thing that's that's a, a good amount of video ram but if you get into editing video at all um when they look into like 4k resolution editing or whatever they start to say if you want to do that you need at least six gigabytes of ram so this is right on that edge of it's it's more than sufficient for what you need with photoshop and lightroom and if you look into working in video at all this will help you um just render out those videos and, and display them on your timeline a lot more smoothly so that's a good thing to have the the nice feature here 32 gigabytes of ddr4 this ddr4 is your physical ram that's the memory of the computer that's what photoshop uses the most when you're editing 32 gigabytes of ram is great the other thing i really like about this system is it has two hard drives one terabyte ssd and one terabyte hdd the ssd is the solid state drive that's the newer technology hard drives that are actually based on chips versus a physical disk that spins this one has both the hdd is the spinning disk hard drive disk versus a solid state disk so you have a total of two terabytes and the way i like to use photoshop and set my system up here with a system like this and this is how my desktop is built although my hard drive is actually a four terabyte but whatever the system software and photoshop and lightroom and all my programs go on to the solid state drive that helps it all run faster and when i first load things into lightroom my catalog is stored on that solid state drive when i'm done editing everything transfers over to the hard drive for longer term storage 
And me, I actually back everything up onto a network attached drive system as well. So I have all of that dumped into the network drives. But this gives you a lot of flexibility in how you handle your images and, and store things on the physical laptop. So that's a great thing to have. And backlit keyboard, Windows 10, all that stuff is pretty much common sense, no big deal. Okay. The display, back up to that, if you read through the details, this has a full HD LED display, 1920 by 1080 resolution. That's standard full, full HD resolution. One of the other ones we'll look at has what's called a QHD resolution. I believe it's this one. No, I should have just kept this simpler for myself. I've made, yeah, so I'm gonna move this one over here. So this one with the RTX, the latest generation graphics card, you can see it goes up in price quite a bit, but it has the QHD resolution, which is 2560 by 1440. That is in between 2K and 4K resolution. So let me show you a quick little graphic here. This kind of gives you a concept of how much resolution we're talking about. Full HD is this 1920 by 1080 pixels. That's a good standard to work with. Nothing wrong with having a, a screen at that resolution, but QHD just gives you that much more information and it's a, going to be a crisper, you know, just more um, detailed image. I don't think any of these laptops that we're going to look at today have a 4K screen. I don't know that I would say anybody needs a 4K resolution screen at this point. Another couple years, maybe. So, outside of that, you know, the, the things that will be a little nice extras, you might find one that has a SD card reader in the side. Um, you want to make sure that you have USB <clears throat> generation 3 or better, so USB 3 or USB C, which is the little oval shaped USB connectors. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Those kinds of things, I mean, any of these current laptops are going to have at least USB 3 out there. Um, if they don't, that's a big problem. But honestly, at the moment, for the money, I think this would be kind of my top recommendation. Um, $1,340 for something with two hard drives and 32 gigabytes of RAM. And this 10th generation chip, it's going to be a good laptop to run with for motorcycles. Um, it's going to be a great laptop to work with for a number of years. Now, the other thing that I want to point out, and here we go, is this keyboard. It has the separate keypad. For me, that's, I'm not going to say it's critical, but it's important because I do a lot of keyboard shortcuts in Lightroom and Photoshop that use this keypad. In Lightroom, hitting one, two, three, four, and five help you star your images so it lets you automatically set whether it's a two three four five star image so that helps with sorting images in photoshop it changes the opacity of your paintbrush so if you hit one that's 10 percent opacity on the brush if you hit five that's 50 percent it's really fast and easy way to adjust those things in photoshop and lightroom is it a deal breaker no you can if you decide you absolutely need it and the laptop doesn't have it you can get a little breakout usb plug keypad but this one has it and that's another plus in my book for this specific laptop so now we're going to look at this one and it's over two thousand dollars two thousand two hundred why is that it has less memory it's a 16 gigabyte ddr right here so the actual physical RAM is 16, which is good for Photoshop, but the other one was 32, which is better, and only one terabyte solid state drive. What you're paying for with this one is this RTX 3060 in the high resolution QHD monitor. Also, it's 165 refresh rate. So this one is really built for high speed gaming, but if you wanna get into editing um, higher resolution video, this one's going to be a lot better for that because you've got that better RTX 3060 graphics card 
Again, remember the RTX is the latest version, GTX is the older style. Um, and it is also, I believe, 16 ROG, latest in it's. They put these specs all over the place, but I'm pretty sure that was a. Yeah, six gigabyte. Okay, there it is. The RTX 3060 with six gigabytes. Blah 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 boost 1802. Great. So that's a really good graphics card. <clears throat> At the moment, again, another couple of years. That'll be old tech. Whatever. It'll still last you a number of years before you have to consider replacing that. <clears throat> the processor is the 11th generation, so that's a brand new processor. High end there. Again, 16 gigabytes RAM. If you need to, you can probably upgrade that. I would imagine that's probably two 8 gigabyte chips in this computer that you could swap out with to 16 gigabytes and then boost this system up to 32. That's probably more tech than most of you are going to want to get into, but those are some options. Um, and then you've got the one terabyte solid state drive. That's good. I would look for at least one terabyte, much less than that, and you'll run into storage issues pretty quickly. But um, this would be a good system, especially, like I said, if you want to get into video editing. But you're going to want to look for external storage right off the bat to make sure you have enough space for all those video files. Okay? Now this one is sort of in between and the nice thing here is you have a few different options you can pick from depending on your budget to boost up the performance of this with Photoshop. Again we're going back to a 144 Hertz gaming uh, resolution. It's an RTX 2070 graphics card so it's later, latest version but it's uh, Okay, so the chipset's a little bit lower than the other one that I just showed you versus the 3060. The 2070 is a step down, but it's 8 gigabytes. Okay, you know, honestly, performance wise, you probably won't notice the difference other than this one will keep up with what you're trying to do. Again, we're going to 32 gigabytes of RAM and a 1 terabyte solid state drive. Okay, great. This one actually comes with a 320 gigabyte external hard drive. Uh, 320 gigabytes in my book isn't going to last a whole lot, but it's kind of nice to have just to dump some extra storage and transfer it back and forth if you need to. Um, so that's cool. Now you look down here in the options and you can build this up to a two terabyte solid state drive instead of the one terabyte in the base model. Then you come here and it's 48 gigabytes of RAM. Ooh, now we're talking. And 48 gigabytes of RAM with a two terabyte hard drive, solid state drive. Or you can go up to 64 and 64 with a two terabyte solid state drive. So that's the two different options. They have RAM at the 32 gigabyte level here, 48 gigabyte level here, 64 gigabyte level here. And then on the right side, you've got the two terabyte solid state drive versus the one terabyte. So if you've got, you know, budget and whatever, this kind of, this actually, this system would kind of be my second recommendation versus that first one at $1,340. Um, I really like this system because it's got that RTX eight gigabyte um, graphics card. It's still a 10th generation chip and it comes with 32 gigabytes of RAM. This, this system is going to be great for Photoshop. And you get a bonus little 320 drive, 320 gigabyte drive that you can throw away if you want to. Just kidding. <clears throat> so those three systems are all ASUS. I did include the Microsoft Surface Book. Now this is kind of getting into Apple territory because Microsoft Surface systems, I, I honestly, I love my Surface Pro. Um, like I said, I've had it a number of years. It's really lightweight. It's been great. The, the nice thing about the Surface systems, they're made by Microsoft, so they are keeping everything up to date. It works well with Windows. I've never had any compatibility issues with this. Um, but for the money, you're not really getting a whole heck of a lot. 
remember, this is $2,700 versus, okay, $2,300 for the top end system with 64 gigabytes of RAM and 2 terabyte and the RTX graphics system. With this, you're paying $300, $400 more. You get a touch screen. Uh, it's a smaller touch screen, 15 versus 13. It's an i7 processor, but it, what, well, I don't know which one it is. It's, it is a 10th generation, so okay. The processor is equivalent, roughly. 32 gigabytes of RAM, that's nice. One terab terabyte of storage. But the GeForce GTX, that's the older graphics, for 1650. So what you're paying for with this is this detachable touchscreen and just kind of the sle sleek, cool look of it, whatever. Um, I am a fan of the Surface Pro systems and Surface Book systems. This is a Surface Book 3, so it's a newer brand, a newer model. Um, but honestly, I don't know that I would recommend you spend the money on this unless you really want that detachable touchscreen system. Um, and I will say it's very nice. I love being able to do that. I don't edit with the pen on the screen so much. Um, I've let my daughter draw with it a few times and that's kind of cool, but um, for taking notes or just doodling or something like that, it works great. Um, and I know people who do use it for that editing directly on the screen and it works good, um, but that's not something that I've been able to make a part of my workflow and actually enjoy doing. My wife actually has the Surface Book. It's the original Surface Book 1 with the performance base, so it's a nice system. And I've, I've played with it, but um, for my money, I would probably go with either this uh, ROG Strix G15. ROG is Republic of Gaming. That's just their kind of uh, gaming system brand or the original one that I showed you, the Asus Tough system for 1400, 1340. Um, I hope that helps, I hope it makes sense. And like I said, this is 2021. I'm sure in the next six months to a year, most of my recommendations here will be out of date. I will put all the links to these and they are affiliate links. So if you purchase through them, I will get a small little kickback just to thank you. It won't charge you any extra. But that does help me continue to make these recommendations. If you have a question about this in 2022, you come read this beep beep. Yeah, if you if you come watch this video in 2022 and these systems are no longer available and you want updated recommendations, just drop me a note here. Let me know. I'll be happy to take a look and see what else I can find. Um, outside of that, there are a lot of other. Uh, manufacturers hp makes gaming systems they actually have their hp omen platform which is kind of cool and that's part of it too if you want to look for something that looks cool versus just being performance great not judging um but for the money i've always found that the asus systems are actually really well built and perform great so there you have it let me know what you think and have a great day.